Hi everyone, welcome to day eight of Advent of Code 2023. We have our first graph problem of the year where we have to navigate a series of nodes using left and right instructions on our camel. So I'm gonna be going through the problems. First, I'm gonna solve them in a time lapse, but I'll explain what the puzzles are and then explain my approach. I think part two today was a little bit confusing because the input had a bunch of assumptions or had like one assumption that is not explicitly stated, but it helps with the solution a lot. So I'll explain that and go into the explanations. But first, let's see a time lapse of me solving the puzzles. Today we are navigating the desert with our camel and we're traveling between a list of nodes which are each described with a three letter code. We have to navigate between the nodes using a bunch of instructions which are a set of left or right instructions that take us between the nodes. Each of the nodes has two paths outwards. Uh, one is left and one is right. For example, in this input, we have the node AAA, which goes to either BBB or CCC, depending on whether you choose the left or the right path. So we go through all of the instructions, either left or right, starting at AAA and follow these instructions. When we get to the end of the instructions, so there's only 277 R's and L's in my input. Once you get to the end of those, you just loop back to the beginning and keep following. For part one, we need to figure out how many steps it takes for us to get to ZZZ. Now, how do we do this? Well, I think today was a bit more implementation for part one, at least. Part two was confusing, but I'll get to that. For part one, I spent a lot of time on extracting the input. I think, I mean, obviously there's a much simpler way to do this, which is just to find the indices of each line where the codes begin and end. But I decided to use regular expressions. I'm sure I'll get faster at this in the future, but I had to look up a bunch of documentation for, um, how to extract stuff with regular expressions because I don't, I'm not fully familiar with the syntax in Python yet. The idea is to replicate the sort of graph we have here by creating a dictionary where the keys are nodes and the uh, values are lists, which have two elements. The first is the left node and the second is the right node. So to do that, I used regular expressions, which are a really handy way of extracting stuff from strings. Basically what we're doing here is we're going through all of the lines and then for each of the lines, we're going to extract this pattern, which says, okay, we have three letters uh, and we're gonna wrap that in the first capture group. So we're gonna get to return this group when we're done with it. Um, and then we have a tuple, which has the opening parentheses. So we have to escape that because uh, the parentheses are going to be a special character in regex. And then we have three letters, comma, space, three more letters, and we're gonna capture each of those. At the end, there's going to be three things re returned when we do dot groups, so we can populate the parents, left and right variables. After that, we can just uh, denote that the children of this parent are left and right. So we know where to go when we're at this node and we have to choose either left or right. So I'm gonna start at AAA, which is the current node, and then we're gonna initialize our count, which is the number of steps we've taken so far at zero. While we're not at the ZZZ node, which is our stop node, we're going to figure out whether we need to go left or right. And that's going to be simply the count, which is the current index, I guess, of our uh, path. And then we mod that by the length of the instruction string, because once we get to the end, so I said the input has length 277. So when we get to 270, well, I guess index 277 is going to be one past the end of that. Modding that with the length of the string 277 is going to get us back to zero. So 278 is then going to get mapped to one, 279 is going to get mapped to two, which is all uh, very nice and well. So we take uh, that instruction. If it's left, you go to the left. If it's right, you go to the right. And then we increment the number of steps we've taken by one. At the very end, once we've reached ZZZ, we can break. I actually don't need this because we are already using a while loop that checks uh, that we're not at the end yet. So that's it for part one, just a bit of bookkeeping. We have to keep track of what the network looks like as well as where we are in the network and then just navigate it using the instructions. For part two, I got confused because, uh, actually I got confused afterwards because I realized that my solution doesn't necessarily generalize. And I don't know, I'll talk about that. But essentially what we have to do for part two is instead of just starting at AAA and ending at ZZZ, we start simultaneously at all of the nodes that end with A. So for example, in our input, uh, there are six of those. So TSA, JTA, BLA, NBA, and AAA and QXA. So we're gonna start at all of those six nodes simultaneously. 
and then we're going to advance them simultaneously. So we start at the first letter in the instructions, L. So we advance all of those six nodes to their left child. Then we keep going. Um, once, we ha once we have updated all of those six, we're going to advance all of them to the right child, and so on and so forth. We're going to keep advancing them until all of them end up at a node that ends with Z. So actually, I want to check how many of those there are. Okay, there's only six. Interesting. Which makes me think that all of these are secretly cycles. But, hmm. Okay, that's an interesting thought. So I did a bit more digging, and it turns out they are actually all cycles, and I'll explain what I mean by that in a minute. But in this input, we have eight nodes, and here's what it looks like graphically. So we start at uh, 11A and 22A. Uh, this is at step zero. Then we move to 11B and 22B, then 11Z and 22C, then 11B again and 22Z, then 11Z and 22B, then 11B and 22C, and finally 11Z and 22Z. And we end there because both of the nodes end with Z. So what's actually going on here is we have cycles which start at something that ends with A, and they go eventually to something that ends with Z after some number of steps, and it could be a large number of steps. But uh, that's one example. Uh, then we have a bunch more nodes which do the same thing. They start at something else that ends with A, and then they end at something else that ends with Z. I think that's the structure that's going on here. So it turns out that actually, um, this one, when we end at Z, we actually end up going back to this node, which is the node which is which immediately follows uh, the node that ends with A that we started at. And the same goes for this one. I believe this is the case. It's not necessarily always general. So for example, you know, we start at something A, and then we end at something Z. We could go back to something in the middle, perhaps. I'm not entirely confident about this. If you have thoughts, please leave them in the comments below. But I don't think it necessarily generalizes. I think uh, after you end up at something, something Z, you could hop back to something in the middle and then like start your cycle there. But we are guaranteed that it will eventually cycle because there's a finite number of nodes and the steps are also a finite length. So we got to start cycling somewhere. But it turns out that the input is constructed such that we always cycle back to the node immediately preceding uh, or immediately following the node that we started at. So that creates a nice little cycle and it's true in the example input over here because 11z goes back to 11b which is indeed the node after 11a and 22z goes back to 22b which is the node that comes after 22a. So for each of these we start at a and then we get to something z and this is repeated like six times and after this z uh, we go back to the second node in this list. And the length of this cycle is exactly the number of steps it takes to get to Z. So let's say this takes like two times, two steps. And then this one, same thing, takes three steps. So we can just take the lowest common multiple or least common multiple of the lengths of all of these uh, paths because there are cycles. And the cycles happen to be exactly the same as the length of the path from A to Z. So once we take the lo least common multiple, we'll have uh, ended at Z for all of the paths. And then we'll just have our answer because after that many number of steps, we'll have ended at something something Z. So the input is a bit contrived, but it works out nicely. And I actually didn't think about this while I was solving. I just took the LCM, which happened to work, uh, which is very convenient. Anyways, how we actually solve the problem is what I did is basically just replicate part one. I took this code and made it a function. So instead of starting at AAA, we can start at any node we want, and then we're going to end at a node that ends with Z. So once we end at a node that ends with Z, we're going to return a number, which is the number of steps it took to get to that node. We compute that for all of the starting nodes, which we can find using list comprehension. We're going to go through all of the nodes, find the ones that end with A, uh, and then put that in this cur list. If you're not familiar with list comprehension, I'll leave a link in the description to that. So once we have all of those nodes, we compute the number of steps it takes to get to something that ends with Z for each of those nodes, and that's going to be stored in this lens list. And uh, we just take the LCM of all of that. This notation, the star notation, is useful for when you have a function that takes in arbitrary number of arguments, but it's like as parameters and not as a list. So for example, if you're doing LCM of two, uh, two, three, five, seven, this is going to be the same as math.lcm star the list two three four seven so you can pass in a list and it'll auto generate the parameters for you like so so that's how the lcm function works and then you, we just pass in the lens 
list, which has the lengths of the cycles for each of the six starting nodes. And then we just print our answer. So that happens to work out really nicely. I'm surprised that I didn't get a wrong answer. Um, in hindsight, what during it, I was not, I was expecting this, but um, it's actually not generalizable. So that's an interesting thought. I appreciate that Eric made the puzzle a little bit easier uh, like this. So that's, I guess, I mean, it's only day eight. I don't expect it to be that hard. If there were cases like this that went back into the middle, there would be a little bit more processing needed and maybe some like Chinese remainder theorem stuff. Um, but we're not going to get into number theory. That's not necessary for today. We just need to know least common multiple for all of the cycle links, take the LCM of all of those, and it just happens to work. Anyways, that's it for day eight of Advent of Code 2023. I hope you enjoyed the video. And as usual, my code will be in the description below. If you have questions or comments, feel free to leave those down below as well. And I'll see you tomorrow for day nine. Thanks for watching.